Esrar, Billy Pablu, Corrado Carbone, Ramchi Saintville, and Sokol Imiraj. Meanwhile, Fairley Dickinson will start with the ball first. Their head coach in his 26th year at Fairley Dickinson, 36th year overall as collegiate head coach is Seth Rowland going for his 350th career victory here today is Seth Rowland led the Knights to numerous NCAA tournament appearances and elite eight appearance in the early part of this millennium and he's got them consistently up near the top of the conference in his time in goal today for the Knights it's Spencer King a senior from Ottawa Ontario leads the NEC with seven shutouts this year and is fifth in all of Division I soccer is a big reason for the success of the Knights this season. Really talented defense as well as he's never had to make more than five saves in a match. So think of that together, just that dominant back line at FDU has put together this season. Starting in the field in front of King, Eduardo Calzoa, Hugo Bacharach, Falutun Kara, Tony Gomez, Joshua Ferreira, Jordan Longe, Kevin Leonard, Jaid Hamadawa, Jeffrey Marquez, Damian Namaski, rounding out the starting 11 for Seth Rollins. Good aggressive forecheck for St. Francis, who had just kept in. So Dello is up pressuring. Picked up on the run. Looking to hit it up ahead for Ferreira giving chase, but it rolls into the box. It's picked up by the freshman goalkeeper, Alec McLaughlin. Started eight of his appearances. This is start number nine for him. He's got four shutouts this season. This season high in saves is seven. Did that against Merrimack up in Massachusetts earlier part of this month. The Terriers, much like FDU, posted some really dominant defensive work this year. St. Francis allowing on average one goal per game. 13 goals against in 13 contests. FDU's played 14 games and given up 17. They're plus four in scoring. St. Francis is plus 14 in scoring. Be a deep throw in for the Terriers here. Is, uh, some of that differential comes from that Pratt game on October 4th that St. Francis won 7 to nothing, also a 6 nothing win at Howard. So you take those two games and you kind of take them for what they are. Knights had a big blowout victory over Stonehill, a 7-2 to victory. University Stadium in Teaneck. Come out for a goal kick. Spencer King going to send this one on its way is <laughs> talk about all the accolades for King and certainly a guy who you can look at with these two keepers today is two prime opportunities and, and two guys who really are, are going to be able to, to put their mark on all conference teams. King third in the conference in save percentage, six in saves per game, all the shutouts and whatnot you'd think is going to be something that helps him in those voting. And, but Alec McLaughlin maybe won't have necessarily the, the volume of games played. Maybe it's Santiago, start of the year, in net for St. Francis, played four games. Landon Riley's played a little bit as well. But McLaughlin closing in on an 83% save percentage and a goals against average coming into play today at .75. Pass is taken away and then the foul whistled as Bacharach kind of tripped up and hit the deck hard. I'll just give a little talk to Johan Grande Rojas. Says, it is a very hard surface underneath this turf here in the pier. It's basically a, a concrete pier that this turf is laid down on top of. So it's very hard and very solid. It's not like a normal turf. You get some big bounces sometimes it plays very fast much like that right there trying to hit a pass ahead for Mdawa but 
just skipped away from him. Helps create a, a good home field advantage for St. Francis. 5-0 and oh this season on this field. 1-4-3 and three away from here. This one will bounce all the way in and play by the keeper, McLaughlin. McLaughlin from Stockport, England. Taking over a net this year after last year, David Santiago, second team all conference performer. Helped lead St. Francis to the NEC championship game where they lost to LIU and PK second straight year at the NEC championship was between St. Francis and LIU and it went into PK's in the spring of 2021. It was the Terriers coming out in front. And then in the fall, went to the Sharks. FDU hasn't reached the, the NEC championship game since 2019 when they won the conference and then fell in the first round of the NCAA tournament to New Hampshire. Although it's a little, it's a little deceiving since in the spring of 21 there wasn't a tournament. It was just the, the top two teams played each other. And then last year in the fall, made it to the semis before falling to the Terriers. passing but still controlled by FDU seven minutes into this one ball rolls in played by McLaughlin so some early possession for FDU trying to set the tone over the first few minutes of this one still no official shots registered for either side Played up ahead, but gotten back to by Calzoa. And this one will make its way out of bounds, right into the tent. Pass intercepted. It's Imaraj on the run down towards the corner. Plays it back to the middle. Looking to crash down and Player down for the Terriers, that's Mesrar in the box. And he'll stop play as Mesrar looked like he was inadvertently maybe cleated on the right foot or outside of the ankle. He's kind of holding his right heel right now. Luckily, you know, sitting up being helped up by Igo Bacharach. Two-time all-conference defender for FDU. Good to see a little sportsmanship there, one team helping out another. Zoom play about 37 minutes left to go, though the clock has not restarted. So that's going to create little issues on the far side as the, the actual clock at the stadium, obviously on the broadcast, and the officials keeping time out of the field. Have things officially. Try that gets blocked away. Ball spinning out towards the top of the box, and Calzoa comes over to clear it out to midfield. Heck of a play there by the senior. From Perugia, Italy. Physical play. So these two teams over the years have combined for some absolute wars out on the pitch. Play hard-nosed styles of soccer. Now the service up ahead, trying to hit Carbone. Wasn't quite able to get it there. Now 
St. Francis trying to keep some pressure on as Pablo will enter. And then Carbone couldn't link the pass ahead. Terrier's assistant coach, Jason Orban, is giving some instructions down the pitch. She, along with Andy Cormack, the assistants for Tom Giovato. The group's been together for four years, been NEC coaching staff of the year and a couple of years ago. And it, it's been a great run for the Terriers all over the last you know, really decade or so, consistently being up around the top of the conference starting back to when Andy Cormack was a member of the team, not just stepping over onto the touchlines as Tom Giovato's top assistant, now associate head coach. Tony Gomez lays it up ahead, but headed along by Pablo. Meanwhile, left to you, Seth Rollins, again, just an institution in NEC soccer, one of the winningest coaches in the entire country going for number 350 on his career today. 36 years overall, 26 at Fairleigh Dickinson. Jamie Highcock is his assistant coach in his third season. Also as Tiago Capella as a grad assistant. Lachlan waving everyone up before he'll send this one away. There's a couple of different lines down at the field here at Brooklyn Bridge Park. If you're not familiar, we're looking at the yellow lines. There's a couple of other soccer fields that run perpendicular across this one. Those are the white lines. Just got to kind of ignore those. The yellow lines are the one we're, we're playing on today. Foul against FDU. Allow the Terriers to set up a set piece here. Draw a nice little applause from Terrier bench. Imaraj, one who's going to send this one on its way. Terriers set up a stack right around the top of the 18. Good swing inside, gotten to first by Bacharach. Ended up heading it out of bounds to set up a corner kick for the Terriers. And now Jaden Humphreys over in the corner. In swinging left booted kicker. Long service here again, got to by Bacharach. Played back into the box for the Terriers. FDU just ping-ponging the ball back and forth. And eventually clearing this one out. Kept in bounds. Ferreira. Dawa trying to get there, but cut off on the ball. And a handball called against Ferreira. As that one kind of came up and inadvertently got him as he was challenging for the ball. Madden was the defender for the Terriers. It was just all over that one. First year from Guadalupe France, who's come on really strong for St. Francis this season, has now started seven straight games. Dawa. Good back heel pass ahead for Galzoa. Picks it down in the corner. Della challenging. And that'll be out for a six for Alec McLaughlin. We mentioned the, the NEC table. FDU has secured its spot in the tournament already with three games left to go. They're six points ahead of LIU, who sits in second place. Then St. Francis, Brooklyn, St. Francis, PA, Merrimack, and Sacred Hearts all within one point of each other.
least it's three games left for the Terriers. Uh, FDU only has two games left. We've got today and then next Sunday on the road down in Washington, D.C., taking on the Howard Bison. Adela just kept that one in. Well, he nearly didn't. Deep throw in for the Terriers coming up. Elsewhere today, LIU at home taking on St. Francis U. That's a, a big one out in Brookville. Another 1 o'clock starts on Long Island. Central Connecticut hosting Stonehill at 3 o'clock in New Britain. Sacred Heart playing host to Howard at 3.30. And how about that interesting non-conference matchup in the middle of the week, Stonehill going and taking on UConn on Wednesday. Interesting. Set up another corner for St. Francis as it deflected out off FDU. By the way, no score right now. LIU about 10 minutes into that one. Cross in. Controlled. Imaraj whipped on the follow-up try and cleared all the way back. Manon will allow it into McLaughlin. Just send this one out of bounds in the midfields. So far, not a lot of shots, just one for St. Francis, none for FDU officially registered in the stats. FDU had some pressure in the first seven or eight minutes. Terriers have started to assert themselves in the last 10. On Grande Rojas picks it off. Way ahead, taken by Bacharach. Manon. Now it's a long game. Down into the corner. Trying to turn the corner back to the middle. And it's picked off. It's played by the Terriers to intercept and then keep it in bounds and start the clear. Carbone working hard. Pressuring the ball all the way back. Mirage able to clear it out off of Tony Gomez. We'll keep it with the Terriers. Light rain starting to come down a little bit heavier right now, but still fairly light. You can see the Traffic on the BQE out in the distance. Brooklyn Bridge still coming in pretty clear. Skyline lower Manhattan off to the left end. Side that Fairleigh Dickinson is kicking down towards. He'll pass by Calzoa. Just didn't realize exactly where he was on the field at the time and just rolled it right out of bounds. Brooklyn Bridge Park, such a tough place for teams to come and play. Stop the clock as Carbone is down after taking a kick down to the shins. 
Bacharach. Play this one shorts. And offside the call against Fairley Dickinson is Mdawa was just inside the last defender. Glocklin will send this one on its way once everything gets all set up. Bounds deflected off of FDU. That'll set up another corner kick for St. Francis. Already their third. That's something the Terriers do very well, averaging about six corners a game. Top marks in the NEC. Mirage over to Ty's shoe. Just inside, 25 minutes left to go in the first half. Cross back to the middle and again, played well by FDU. They've done such a good job on getting to the first ball off of all three corners now for St. Francis. St. Phil gave it up. Della to Carbone and taken away by Calzoa, tried to save it in. Wasn't able to, but it'll down for a deep throw in. It's Pablo gonna send this one on its way and play it short, not looking to take a run up and almost play this like a corner. Comes out another throw for St. Francis. Just hit the reset button. Pablo fighting and Cleared out of bounds again by Calzoa. And then Abdella. Made out of harm's way for a moment. And then Rojas, the pass, got in through. Mesra are not able to get to it cleanly. Now here come the Knights the other way, Gomez. Long ball up ahead, Ferreira. Looking for some help in the middle, he's got it. But there's Manon to make the play. McLaughlin rolls it off far side to start the counter. Terrier's looking to break out, but lose control of it out of bounds. Mirage, take it away. Gomez with the run up the middle. Slowed down, Mdowell giving chase in the corner. Was able to get there to Alonge. Run inside, Grande Rojas let it go. But again, good pinch by Calzoa to maintain the possession for FDU. Kara. Amen is a midfielder now playing center back. Kevin Leonard on the far side. Lost it, but had the quick throw back in. We'll play it all the way back to Tunkara. Truck near side of Calzoa. Now Mosky drops it off. Look 
Going to get it back inside, not able to. And again, Terrier is starting to counter. Abdella. Ball came up. Inadvertent handball was not called. Now they had Carbone trying to reverse course, but Tunkara able to get there and get the possession for the Knights and start the clear up to the midfield. Ferreira trying to get down, gets tangled up. No whistle we play on, Ferreira. He's pleading his case. But doesn't get the call. Long play. Goal box to goal box. <laughs> Della. And rolled all the way into goal. Again, keep trying to link that last pass ahead to Carbone, who has been working hard up top, but just not able to make it work just yet for the Terriers. Inside 20 minutes left to go in the first half. Still no score. Francis trying to hand Fairly Dickinson its first loss in conference play. The Knights looking to remain unbeaten. Five wins, no losses, and one draw. The draw came against St. Francis U. It's a scoreless battle in Teaneck. There's a near chance for FDU. Didn't end up materializing in anything. Jack Pasco. Just gonna check in here for the Terriers. Abdella down in the corner. Carbone circling. Pasco back to Imaraj. Comes out. Rande Rojas had it blocked away. Gomez couldn't quite get it, but Grande Rojas had it off of him last. Temperatures upper 50s, lower 60s in New York City today. Some light rain continuing to fall as it has for a couple of hours now. Dawa cut off. Shore stepped across. Good tackle by Ferreira. Broke up the run for a moment for St. Francis. Josh Ferreira, the grad student from Georgetown, Guyana. This plays with such a high motor, great energy and efforts. See the physicality out there today. And looks like we're going to see our first yellow card of the day come out. And she's St. Ville. Picks up the yellow is looked like it was Gomez cutting across, had his leg out, and St. Ville running over, collided with him. Seventeen eleven left in the first. St. Ville picks up the yellow. You certainly don't blame the officials there with the 
the way that this game has been for the entire match so far, but also we the physicality has really ramped up over the last few minutes. Understand why I want to make sure things stay uh, under wraps as best as possible. Don't want things to get out of hands. Goal kick here for Spencer King. Shots 2 nothing on the score sheet right now in favor of St. Francis. Terriers get to the second ball. Over to St. Bill. Jeffrey Marquez stepped over to break that one up for FDU. As a foghorn blows out in the harbor off to the left. A lot of boats going by on the East River. Especially on a day like this. Foghorn's needed. Humphreys had the better positioning. Stay though with FDU. Final third of the first half, still no score between Fairleigh Dickinson and St. Francis Brooklyn. And good back and forth, although the, the Terriers have really controlled the possession for most of this first half. There have been some some runs for FDU where they've sustained possession for a few minutes here and there and generated some opportunities but nothing that's cashed in on a shot on target or otherwise so far just two shots combined between the two teams in the first half hour and it's exactly what we thought this one might be with two really stellar defensive teams two excellent goalkeepers but even beyond that again the the back lines the the midfielders for both St. Francis and FDU. Very talented. They've done a great job at limiting their opponent's opportunities throughout the season. Must look foul against Manon. A little bump on Ferreira. Tony Gomez will send this one on its way. Headed in on Nets. Pacharak redirected it in on McLaughlin, who was able to make the play easily, but that goes down for the first shot for FDU and the first shot on goal for either side today. This one rolls back into McLaughlin. He's picked it off. Going to get it back to the middle, but Tunkara whiffed. And a foul called against St. Francis. Michele Signorelli 
Junior checked in a couple minutes ago up top. Was the one fighting for it and was the one who ended up having the whistle blown against him. Called against the Knights. Again, more physicality between these two teams. It, it's been a really, really interesting start to this one. Again, it expected this to be a very physical matchup. We've already seen one yellow card come out. Fouls than shots. Still scoreless. Right around 10 minutes left to go in the first half. Herrera. Now it's Signorelli drawing the foul. So it was double teamed going after that ball and inadvertently. Knocked up high. Imaraj will send this one on its way, and Terriers push everybody up ahead to try to generate something off this. I serve into the box. Acharak got there first. Humphreys laid it ahead. Imaraj fires this one in. And a save made, dive to the right by Spencer King. I'll go out for a corner kick for the Terriers. Make a quick substitution. Caleb Donkwa is going to check in. Ramsey Saintville off to the bench. Final couple of minutes for a breather. Imaraj will swing this one in. He's looking back post. Khalid Abdella, but got in over the top. And now for Spencer King, goal kick, who saved a goal with a great play off that initial shot by Imaraj. And, you know, for King, a, a guy who, again, leads the NEC with seven clean sheets this year, top five. Among all D1 goalkeepers, hasn't needed to make a ton of saves this year, but when they have been needed, he's been able to answer the call. Looks like he was here today as Gomez clears this one well out of bounds. Avalu called for a little bit of a tug on the jersey. Gomez, the serve ahead. McLaughlin collided with Humphreys, but gets back up. Threat not over. Shot comes in, saved by McLaughlin. Heck of a punt, a lot of backspin. Imaraj. That ball play ahead. Quick touch pass back. Looted Imaraj. And take it away. What a great challenge by Jaden Humphreys, but he gets called for foul and immediately kind of popped up and said, what did I do? But it was a quick, quick argument. Center backs, Tunkara, Bacharach. Playing a quick game of catch. Tunkara. Played back by Shure. Strong 
strong play ahead. Dankwa lost it. <laughs> Players hitting the turf all over the place. A little bit slick. Kind of a very hard and fast turf, so <laughs> saw some guys go sliding a couple of yards. Touch pass underneath to Calzoa. Alonge. Trying to get around Donkwa and does. Ludes another defender. To collide back to the middle. Ferreira had it blocked. FDU keeping the pressure on. Jadam Dawa fires to long range right in on net. And McLaughlin makes the play. Is over the last couple of minutes, FDU starting to get its wind about it offensively. A couple of really dangerous opportunities in front. So far, all the shots coming in right on McLaughlin. King sent it on its way. Maski fighting Imaraj. Up the Terriers. Zoa added in back to Tunkara. Signorelli's hard check up high, much like Carbone was doing before he was relieved, just forcing the ball back further and further. It's very aggressive pressure played by the Terriers. up out of bounds it'll be St. Francis throw in and <laughs> the Knights are all protesting and the linesman ended up saying no no yep it's it's FDU ball came over to correct it and get things right Picked off. Abdella got there. Now here come the Terriers. Pasco drops it off and steams ahead. Humphreys. Corner for Signorelli. Trying to get it back to Humphreys. Back heel. Signorelli working near the edge of the box in front to Pasco. And a redirected wide left of the far post. Had just two shots throughout the first half hour. And in the last 12 minutes, I've seen a flurry of activity. Shots are currently six to four in favor of St. Francis inside the final three minutes. Play on. Pasco. Cross was deflected. King comes all the way out off his line. Good pinch by the Terriers. Pablo using his head. And Dawa. Back across midfield, two minutes left to go in the first. Tukara. To 
Imiraj. Signorelli knocked down. Dawa trying to get around Grande Rojas. Some jostling. Alonge fires and it goes high over the top of the crossbar. Pulling the trigger from about 30 yards out. Jordan Alonge needed that one to come down just a little bit. With one minute remaining here in the first half. Cara. Play coming across by Jaden Humphreys. Pasco. Terry is looking for a chance for one last shot here in the first half. This will come out for a goal kick, and that'll also do it for us here in the first half. No need to send this one away. 45 minutes in the books here at Pier 5. No score between St. Francis, Brooklyn, 6-5 to five in favor of St. Francis in the first half. Two shots on goal for FDU, just one on target for the Terriers. Both teams had a couple of opportunities, especially the Knights came on really strong over the last... 10 minutes of the first half. We'll see if they're able to carry that momentum forward into the second half in their quest to remain unbeaten. In Northeast Conference play, 5-0-1. Oh, the last loss for the Knights came against the Manhattan Jaspers on September 21st, their last non-conference action of this season. The Knights have been really good. And when you talk about just how good Fairly Dickinson has been this season. You look back at the way that Seth Rowland put together the non-conference schedule, starting off it's a couple of Patriot League teams, Lafayette, Army, and Navy, but then going on the road to take on UMBC, who was a team at the time that was receiving votes in the top 25 poll, lost 2-1 to one on the road at the Retrievers. Then played Seton Hall at home, lost one nothing to a Big East team, then went on the road to take on the number two team in the country at the time in Wake Forest down in North Carolina and lost three to two. So those are three one goal losses against really quality opponents. A battle tested FDU team that really went out of its way to, to challenge itself in the non-conference and those games are really helping out FDU's, uh, FDU's, uh, the word I'm looking for is RPI, number 54 in the RPI, which is sandwiched in between Rutgers and Creighton and ahead of teams like Notre Dame, San Francisco. Uh, it, it's just a, a really strong out of league schedule and, and some close games in that that have helped out FDU in that quest and, and have really helped them out to far and away have the best RPI in the Northeast Conference. The next best after their 54 is LIU at 104. And there's a, a big gap between the top two teams in RPI in the Northeast Conference. Merrimax at 150, Sacred Heart at 153, St. Francis PA 160. It's kind of where a lot of the conference is, is bunched up. in that 150 to 175 bands.
Kings sends this one on its way. A couple of minutes into the start of the second half. Teams feeling each other out a little bit. Out of what we saw in the first half, some intense fighting in the midfield. Set piece opportunity for St. Francis. Humphreys will be the one who takes it here. talk about RPI should mention St. Francis comes in at 166 today by that measure and that alone FTU the the favorite team in this one and obviously the the home field advantage playing a big role here today Pasco had it blocked He's looking to feed it ahead Damian Namowski was there Stay deep for Terrier throw in. Humphreys looking for a ball. Finally gets one. Every game he's played the last couple of years, Humphreys started. He's been an anchor for this team since coming over. Played back to the middle. Knocked away by King. Emiraj there, but has it taken away. Couldn't get a shot off. Now here's Hamdawa. Racing back the other way through a couple of tackles. Forced out wide. Going to get back to the middle, but has it taken away by Manon. Pasco. Ahead for St. Vale, who just couldn't get there. And then slipped on the landing and went sliding. On a very slick turf. The good news is the rain has really lightened up. It might not even be coming down anymore. But it was a very light rain throughout the entire first half and most of halftime. Made a, a very fast turf, also very slick. And Dowa tripped up and knocked down. Both teams asking for whistles against... The other team, and now finally one comes, and it comes against FDU. Hamdow had a little bit of a push in the midfield that wasn't called going for the ball in the air. Then he was chucked to the ground. That wasn't called either. Hugo Bacharach over on the far side had a push that did get called. See, so often it's the, the second guy in who gets the penalty. Here it was the third. Humphreys swings it ahead, got to first. Now Maski. Far side, Hemdawa. Flips the field. Leonard trying to get there on the run down to the corner, but Manning cuts across and clears it out. Jeffrey Marquez comes up. Makes the quick throw in. Back to Marquez. Local for Fairleigh Dickinson out of North Bergen. Not too far from Teaneck. Just across the river. From New York City. Take it away. Here's Johan Grande Rojas. Carbone up ahead. It's close to being offside. The flag is up. And now the whistle comes for it. Arbonne was slightly off, tried to get himself back on. But just wasn't able to do it in time. And so the whistle blows against the Terriers. Spencer King telling his teammates, hey, get up, get up. St. Francis packing it in. All 10 players in the field right now in the midfield. No one up and no one dropped too far back. Added ahead. Just 
Lee Bay a long game. Mirage ahead for Carbone, but just too far off his foot. You can see the frustration for Corrado Carbone. Will hop up and down after that one got in on net for King. Alonge's got it. Got a quick passing. For FDU, Amdawa. Into the corner, fed out of bounds. Set up for a goal kick. Alec McLaughlin. Haven't said his name a whole lot in the second half so far, but was quite active in the first. Had a lot of balls shot in on him, made a couple of saves. into the box get around McLaughlin goes wide whistle blows after you looking for a foul they're not gonna get it but a corner kick for FDU first corner of the day for the FDU Knights trying to take the lead early on in the second Swung in, the redirection, looking to go to Bacharach on the backside. Wasn't quite able to get there. It was Leonard who had the kick from the corner for FDU. The Terriers withstand that threat from the Knights. Going to create another one here. It's Ferreira battling down in the corner through the double team. Out of bounds. Knights ball. Marquez. Looking for somewhere to go and actually sees the opening and quickly sent out. So we'll do it again. time it's kept in ever so slightly Namaski and off the foot and out of bounds like Leonard just not able to control it cleanly off his foot One back by the Terriers. Nice play. Saintville on the run. Carbone trying to get there to Kara. Shielding him from it, but he is able to beat him to the ball. Right near the edge of the box. Gets tangled up. Carbone chest at his side. Carbone tripped up. They're looking for a whistle. They don't get it. Terriers get the ball. Calzoa over to collect in the corner. Knights exit their own ends. Now looking to move quickly. Trying to catch St. Francis too far up. Leonard. For Alonge, goes hunting and just missed over the top of the crossbar. Second time, uh, Jordan Alonge, the senior from London, England, has fired a shot that just missed high. Time trying to stick it in the upper 90.
huge boot by McLaughlin. Leonard. Barrera. Fires, and it goes way high. Just pulled the trigger, the off foot for Joshua Ferreira, but Knights really generating plenty of opportunities over the last couple of minutes. Get the feeling that for FDU, the way they've been going, it's only a matter of time before these these tries start consistently finding their way on target more. They are not missing by much. Imaraj throws it in from long range. Goes wide left. Shots are 9-7 in favor of the Terriers. But still only one shot on goal for St. Francis. Two shots on goal for FDU. Score about a half hour left here in the second half. 60 minutes in. Longe again. Shot from long range. It was well off the mark. Right now, Josh Ferreira's. Having a conversation with the referee. Not exactly sure what about, but something up ahead of the play, I think. Long gate. Advancing down the right flank. It's Leonard, but too strong. Played out, and that'll be another corner kick. Coming up for FDU. Again, Leonard will send this one on its way. Outswinger this time. Enter by Bakaraj. Ends up seeking left of the far post and will stay scoreless. As again, the Knights, another chance that falls just a little bit off the mark. Huge kick by McLaughlin. Getting to be a little windy here on Pier 5. It's been a little bit windy throughout the day, but starting to pick up over the last couple of minutes. Blowing across the pitch. From right to left on your screen. and whipped. Sure. Out of the head. St. Phil was giving chase. Tukara got there first. Now Ramshi St. Phil not able to control this one. Just lifted out of bounds. Well out of play. And Humphreys will throw it in. Kara back to collect. Allow it to roll all the way into King. Service goes well right. Lachlan over to play it. Let's wave it everybody up. Closing out on the final 25 minutes. St. 
Hill trying to get around the defender and not able to to keep it in bounds. Way Abdawa with the run into the box sent wide. What a play by Pavlu! Sokol Mirage down around midfields. And tangled up with Ferrera. Now being helped up and pat on the back from Jeffrey Marquez. Francis preparing to make a substitution, bring Michele Signorelli back into the game. Next chance that they're going to be able to. Probably the start of the next wave of subs for both of these sides. Get down to about that point of the day. Another deep throw in for FDU taken by Eduardo Calzoa. Plays the cross to the middle. Manon had it out. Amdawa at the quick touch. Carbone gets onto it and then gets tripped up. Kevin Leonard had him down. Tried for the quick start, but disallowed by the officials. Instead, McLaughlin will come up. And this is the, the great asset of having a, a goalkeeper with a strong kicking leg come up and take a set piece from around there. Especially for a team like the Terriers playing a pretty aggressive back line today. A long game. Grande Rojas takes it away. St. Ville crosses midfield, tripped up. And the whistle blows against the long game. Imaraj will send this one on its way. 24 minutes and change to go. To the top of the box, played out to the midfield by FDU. Ferreira waits. And Grande Rojas called for going over the top. Officials trying to get control of this one. Getting really emotional out there over the last few minutes. Kara dropped it off. Marquez head for Ferreira. Full head of steam down to the corner. And eventually this one ridden out for a deep FDU throw in. It's a good job by Mohamed Shur. Freshman from Sierra Leone. Brought Ferrer out wide with him and it's kind of forced him down in that corner. Looking for the bicycle kick in the middle. And Dowell couldn't catch it clean. Carbone sends it up ahead. Della. Stay with the Terriers. Finally, that substitution is no. Uh, they blew the horn. That one's coming on, though, right now for St. Francis. 
Cinderella is still just kind of standing over there by the scorer's table. Humphreys to take it. Carbone running around. Send one in on Nets. It's played by King. Trying to play it inside the box, but just got it too far in. Trying to get organized. Long play ahead. Dawa. Cross back to the middle. Redirect goes wide left. Out of bounds off the Terriers. Corner kick coming up for FDU. Kevin Leonard over to take it. And Swinger headed on, and it goes wide right. And the yellow card coming out. Didn't see exactly who it was. There are a couple players all in the area. They're being shown. We'll get that sorted out here in just a second. But second yellow card given out in this match. Jack Pasco is going to come out. Signorelli will finally get a chance to check in. He's been trying to come into this game for about five minutes. It's Tony Gomez for FDU. Got shown that yellow card. Confirmed that. Humphrey's onto it. St. Ville. Some help ahead. Cross to the middle, Carbone, but knocked away by Tunkara. And sent in on net, King. Pressured will just cover up. Kind of went down on that one in slow motion. Long kick down by King. Both of these keepers showing off some really strong kicking legs today. A couple players shaking up. Long A and Grande Rojas kind of headbutted each other inadvertently. It's a Long A who's getting the talking to. Humphreys swings it ahead. Signorelli turns it, fires, saved by King. Terriers materializing an opportunity. But again, Spencer King for the second time today making a great diving save to keep it scoreless. But a corner kick coming up for St. Francis. Humphreys, looking back side, King punched it along, down toward the corner, and a throw in coming for the Terriers. Flip it to the other side of the field, change up the alignments. Humphreys will come over to take the throw. St. Ville. Cross to the middle, looking backside, but played out by FDU. Abdella back onto it. Cross to the middle, deflects off the Knights. Another corner for St. Francis. Let's 
Sixth corner for the Terriers in this game. Inside the final 17 minutes. They're gonna crack the egg in this one. Humphreys swings it away over the top of everybody. Goal kick for FDU. It's caught a little bit too much of that one. Needs to either drive it higher up into the air or get a little less on it. Look at a breakout. Ball ends up being tipped out by Billy Pavlu. Made a couple of nice defensive plays here today. Long A. Couldn't quite get it. Right around 15 minutes to play. Pavlu. Out to the midfield. City Rally tangled up with Acherak. Whistle against the Terriers. Set piece for the Knights. Pretty good spot for it, too. Kevin Leonard. Solid cross in, but St. Francis got to it first. Follow-up try goes well wide right. Played on a hop by McLaughlin. He'll start the counter quickly. St. Bill all tripped up. It stays strong in the ball. Ramsey St. Bill ridden down to the corner. Terriers think they should have a corner kick, but it's going to be a goal kick. And I'm inclined to believe St. Francis here because if St. Phil wasn't sure that that had hit if you play, why would he not pursue the ball for the last six feet before it rolled out of bounds? Unless he was sure that it was off the other team and that a corner was coming up. But I don't know, players do weird things sometimes to try to get the calls. Rally down to the corner, lost the handle. Quick throw for the Terriers. High swing into the box. Carbone trying to get there. King had it off his hand, and they blow the whistle. It's Carbone for a little contact. I think that's going to draw a card, but... And they will stop playing and allow a free kick for the Knights. About 12 and a half to go. Longay having his jersey tug, no whistle. Imdawa down in the corner, has some help back in the middle with both Ferreira and Leonard. Longay, he'll get the cross away. Knocked aside by the Terriers. Mdawa back on it. Centering try taken away. St. Ville giving chase back to the midfield. Signorelli fighting with Tunkara. And they blow the whistle of the arm bar. 
just outside the box against FDU. One of the prime chances of the day for St. Francis. Free kick from just outside the corner of the box. Imaraj will take it. FDU sets up a wall. Tony Gomez, Kevin Leonard. Two players. Cross goes in on net. Saved by King. Not sure that one would have come in. It looked like it was going to curl and hit the post. But King not wanting to take any chances for good reason. Knocked it down. It'll be another corner for St. Francis. Played to the middle. This one nearly goes in. And it goes out of bounds off of St. Francis. So the Terriers threaten but can't put one in. Shots now 13 to 9 in favor of the Terriers. 4 to 2 on goal. And it back into McLaughlin. Waving everyone up. It's a nice line drive away. St. Bill. Strong through the tackle. Finds help in the middle, and King covers it up. But he rolled out a corner kick for St. Francis coming up. Final 10 minutes, and the Terriers cranking up the pressure. But can they find the first goal of this match? St. Bill will take it. Longay got there. Humphreys was chasing down backside, but it came back to Longay who clears out to midfield. Now Ferreira looking to turn the corner. Gets through. And a play by Humphreys. <laughs> it's a second ball on the field for a second and a great play by one of the crew. Let's go and get it. And Urelli to St. Phil. Center is taken away by Bacharach. One ball ahead. It's tipped out of bounds by Mohamed Shur. All the way down to McLaughlin. Roll it out. Start it with Manon. All the way back into goal, King. Taken by the Terriers. They come again. Long range shot that goes way high. A try from Khalid Abdella. A little bit too much on the bottom hemisphere of the ball. with a good job defensively to allow that one to get all the way in and King again covering up off the pressure. 
Kelly Signorelli. Transfer from Arizona Western Community College by way of Vilongo, Italy in the Bergamo region. It's Kevin Leonard, a little bit slow to get up for FDU. Not stopping the clock though for it. Here's Tony Gomez. Laughlin over to pick it up. Terriers looking to strike quick. Time getting limited for both sides. up three points today would be huge for St. Francis entering play one point up on the trio of St. Francis, Merrimack and Sacred Hearts three-way tie for fourth place in the NEC that final playoff spot only a couple games left Arbonne slides and chips this one high well out of bounds FDU's in the postseason already. LIU with 10 points. Seems to be well on its way. Towards an NEC postseason berth. They're taking on St. Francis PA today on Long Island. And it was a win for the Red Flash. So St. Francis U now up to 10 points as well. Leapfrogging the Terriers for the time being. Only a couple games left to go. Could go down into the corner, Longay. What a play by Humphreys. Then clears it up ahead for St. Bill. Imaraj in the middle. Three players ahead. Looking to hit the big pass to Abdella. It just goes wide. A little bit too much on it. So St. Francis PA and LIU now tied for second place with 10 points behind FDU and just ahead St. Francis Brooklyn. So even if this one ends in a, a draw, the Terriers would remain in fourth. One point behind. But in securement of that last playoff spot. Of course, also Sacred Heart playing later today. That's a, a 3.30 game against Howard. Certainly one that you look at for the Pioneers as a winnable game and a, a good chance for them to pick up three points. Merrimack on its off week. Potential that even if this ends in a draw and the Terriers pick up a points, they could find themselves dropping down to fifth. How much of a must-win game this is for St. Francis. Just a couple of minutes left to go. Still scoreless with FDU. Signorelli for Carbone. Right back to him. Little two-man game on the far side. Terriers trying to settle it. Bacharach ends up getting all tangled up. With Signorelli and the whistle blows. They'll stop the clock. Three oh two showing on the official time on the scoreboard on the far side of the fields. Zoom the swing in. 
And whistle again, St. Francis. Point for FDU would get them up to 17 points. They have just one game left to go. After today, same goes for LIU. So I believe, my math might be off, believe point for FDU would secure them the top spots top seed in the NEC tournament. Just mathematically, they would have a seven-point lead, even teams with two to go, not going to be able to make that up. Minute 43 left to play here today. Now 90 seconds left. FDU just taking its time. Bacharach swing ahead. Kicked in by Pablu. Now Della pressuring. St. Francis just playing everyone back. They got nine guys inside the final third of the field. The only guy who's up is Kelly Signorelli. Now inside, one minute left to go. A long game for Tony Gomez. Has some space. Finds Leonard in the corner. Forced out by Humphreys. Take a big run up, 30 seconds left to play. Terriers got to move quickly if they want to have a chance. Flip the field, Abdella. Could help ahead, try to find Signorelli, but it's taken away by Bacharach. Now 10 seconds left. One last shot. Blocked away, and that'll do it. A scoreless draw here at Pier 5 at Brooklyn Bridge Park. St. Francis and FDU, two of the premier defensive teams.